Hello and welcome to another lovely video where I get to show off a little bit more of the Imperatrix Victoria mod to you. If you are unaware, I have done one video on Imperatrix Victoria before. It is an attempt to bring the era of the Victorians, the, the Victorian era, funnily enough how, it's, uh, how it goes like that, bring the Victorian era into the game Imperator Rome. And... It's pretty hype. It's pretty hype. And it hasn't been a whole lot long of time since we had the previous Dev Diary. It's only been about a month. But considering the Dev Diary before that took like six months to come out, it's it's good pace. It's good pace. Once a month, I can deal with. So let's get into this Dev Diary, see what it's all about, see if there are things to be hype about. I'm assuming there is. Let's get into it. Greetings readers, today's Dev Diary will be the first to focus on the new UI graphics and the first to look at the new pop types too. We'll be discussing how pop types will work mechanically in a future Dev Diary, so consider this also a teaser for what's to come. This Dev Diary will be left in the head hands, the head hands, the capable hands of Luke Zlotti, the executive 2D artist. Don't worry about the title, it's something to make him feel better about himself. A bit like in uh, Futurama. Uh, hi, I'm Luke, and some of you might have seen my Imperatrix of, uh, promo maps. Uh, I have not, but I like this. That's about over to Reddit, sure. Uh, can I have an open in a thing? There we go. Ooh. Ooh, that's tasty. That's tasty. I do like that a lot. I do like that quite a bit. It'd be amazing if this is what the game looked like uh, when you zoom out, because I, I think the style of it is just gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Uh, and also this one... Ooh, okay, that's that's something. That's something. The Kingdom of Prussia is purple. The Austrian Empire is red. Or an, or an orangey red. It's like the color of my shirt. Right? It's it's pretty close to the color of my shirt. Um, that Those are some... Those, those are certainly... Decisions. Those those are absolutely decisions that have been made. Uh, okay, okay, fair enough. Uh, we've also got the uh, the administrative borders of the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom of Poland. These are, I would assume, like the province boundaries uh, inside the region of Poland. So uh, yeah, no, I can see it. That that's fine. It doesn't really make any sense at this point. And there we have the. Uh, the Futurama reference. I'm not going to play this. But basically, he get he's uh, unhappy about being delivery boy, so then he turns into executive delivery boy. I'm not going to play it because whoever owns Futurama right now will probably kill my video. But it, you know, you know that you get the gist. You get the gist. Um, he joined to make sure the Congress Poland will be as polished. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, as pol pol uh, possible. One thing led to another, and now he's the 2D executive artist of the mod. Congratulations. I want to tell you the story about the new pop icons, but first let me show you one of the greatest placeholder pitches in the history of temporary pitches, which was somehow rejected by our lead subbossinator. You know what? I can see that being a thing. I, I like I like the dynamicness. There's a, there's a range to it. There is, um, there's, you know, there's feeling, there's flavor, there's, you know, it's got life. He's, uh, you can see that this guy here. He's happy. Uh, this one, he's um, he's he's very shocked and looking over in this direction, where this guy is, you know, taking a shit uh, while standing, which is, you know, quite amazing. Uh, this guy is actually just shocked as well. He's just like big scream going on. You know, I'm you know I, I'm just gonna move on. Um, so the process. Let's take a look at the province screen, which I think looks amazing. I love this filigree kind of border going on. The colors hopefully could be toned down just a smudge. The, I, I feel like the colors are a little bit too saturated, but maybe it fits in with the rest of the map. Uh, we have yet to see. Uh, so look, these are the pop types and holy shit, the city of Karuna can fit 1,459 pops in it. It only builds six buildings though. So that is something that has been uh, edited. Uh, Trade-wise, it looks like we've seen uh, we don't see any new goods there. It's in the province of Galicia in Spain. Um, still got a culture thing and a religion thing and a uh, pop type of breakdown. But let's have a look at the pop types. 
there are seven of them. Okay. Let's see if we can guess what these are. Like aristocrat, leprechaun, shopkeeper, farmer, um, uh, clergyman. Um, oh god. Uh, Krogan? Kobold. L literally looks like a lizard man. Saurus. And then slave. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Aristocrat, leprechaun, shopkeeper, farmer. Um, I want to say Sasha Baron Cohen for some reason. I, I don't know why, but you know, in in the dictator, he looked very much like this: a lizard man and slave. Nice, nice, nice. So, Imperatrix Victoria uses seven pop types instead of Vanilla's five. When you joined the team, the pop screen looked very messy. So when he started doing it, the indentured surf prop type was not defined yet. So we had six of them, and a passionate discussion about serfdom was still ahead of us. Is serfdom slavery? Is it not? There's a question, valid questions. Um, I think in the Victoria 3 dev diary that recently came out, there was also a little bit of a discussion on um, serfs versus slaves, uh, where slaves were serfs were not counted as slaves in the game, as slaves were counted as being wholly owned by another human being, and serfs don't fit that particular definition. Uh, the team was focused on populating the world with new pops, but checking them in-game was horrible because of the UI. So at one point, he started thinking, uh, tinkering with it, and implemented temporary icons that represented our pops slightly better than geometric figures. As you can see, he also added nice background graphics as well. Alright, I like it. This is back when there were only six, even though slaves are there. Oh, so are these maybe serfs? Are you splitting into serfs and slaves, perhaps? That maybe no, no, no. Which one are we missing here? We're missing whatever this is. I mean, I, is it clergy? I, I, I kind of don't think so anymore. Whatever this is, has is the one that's missing here. Um. So we've got population of Recife. Uh, there's some cultural assimilation of slaves, religious conversion of slaves. Um, these pop types are being reduced. Uh, whatever they end up being. Leprechauns. The leprechauns are being reduced. Slave promotion allowed. That's normal. Uh, so this is, I assume, in Brazil then. Recife. Or Recife. Uh, Brazilians got Afro-Portuguese and Tupig. Okay. And these are the artworky pictures. Gotta say, I don't really recognize any of them. Although you look a little bit like um Henry Cavill. I don't know why. You just kind of you have a little bit of a Henry, Henry Cavill about you. Anyway, later on, we decided it was time to move on and replace the black icons with something less temporary. Finally, we agreed to make human silhouettes in the style of Vanilla Imperator that will also be familiar to Vicky 2 veterans. So the pop icons, here we go. Brief summary of why they look like they look. Keep in mind that at least some of them might get a little quality update. So learning how to make them on the fly. So for the upper strata, first attempt at making a pop icon. A man in a top hat and suit should be clearly recognisable as somebody wealthy and important. While this pop would most likely wear black, I've chosen the blue colour of the suit to make sure that all our icons are both shape-coded and colour-coded. The colour itself was heavily inspired by the Vicky 2 capitalist pop icon. I thought that the cigar would be a nice touch too. Uh, this is the icon most likely to be updated later. Bonus points for people who can identify the background picture. It... Is it... Just, just, just hear me out a second. Is it from balls? What's the what's 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 it called? Um, is this Watson? I've honestly forgotten what the main character's called in that. It's uh... oh my god! I've completely forgotten. Why has it slipped my mind? Benedict Cumberbatch played him in the BBC show, and. Um, Robert Downey Jr. played him in the film, and it's completely slipped my mind what the fucking film is called, or what the what the what the character is called. What the? Sh I've got a terrible memory. Uh, but anyway, that's the role model for the dude, and I'm. It is from. The, I'm. I'm. I'm guessing it's from that anyway. So you can have a capitalist in any color you want, so long as it is dark blue. All right. 
Now we have the middle strata, the second icon made right after the first one. The base point was a bowler hat, different colour than blue and glorious moustaches. I'm happier with this one than the upper strata icon, but at some point I'll update the icon too. On the background you can see the person responsible for almost half the background pictures used by me. A pioneer of colour photography, Sergei Mikhailovich Prokudin Gorsky himself. Okie dokie, that's cool. Leprechaun, like I said, it's a leprechaun, yeah, you know, it's a leprechaun. Uh, but yeah, bowler hat is, is very iconic. Um, proletariat, I started getting bold with this one. I guess the skill level increased after the previous two. Besides color coding, I also wanted icons to be shape coded so that the players could reckon them, recognize them even in black and white. That's why the proletariat icon has two models. Uh, one is the most famous bald guy after Johnny Sins. Uh, the other one is Lenin. Uh, I do, I do quite like the, the going after this. That, that, I like that. That makes sense to me. Uh, now for the lower strata. Uh, to him it always meant farmer, so I desperately looked for a role model with a pitchfork. When I found this wonderful picture I couldn't resist, the final result looked a little bit too American-ish uh, and 1950s-ish, so I swapped the colours. In the meantime, the background photo uh, presents some Russian peasants, if you remembered correctly, from a photo by Prokudin Gorsky. Love it. Fantastic stuff. Um, and then he fixed some guy's face. I don't know whose face that is. Is that his face? I guess it, it used to be or something. Either way. So, on to indentured. Okay, so that's what these are. Uh, the pop type that was not supposed to be in the game, but the lines between slavery, serfdom, and freedom are so vague depending on the area and culture, we finally decided to separate them out. Because the word indentured is too hard to me, it always called them serfs. I would agree with that. It, yeah, I would, I would agree with that. And what country comes to mind when you think about serfs? Um, most of the middle middle ages, not middle ages, the medieval period countries, most of them. Um, and who's the most popular surface looking Russian of that century? The rather ra la, the lover of the Russian queen and Russia's greatest love machine. On the background image, you can see one of Prokudin Gorsky's photos, one of the two prisoners shackled together in modern day U Uzbekistan. Um, uh, uh, ra ra Rasputin, Russia's greatest love machine. Yeah, that's the one. Um, and then... This guy, the best dance ever. Okay, uh... Why is he... Why is it just a random picture of... What? Oh, did he maybe sing the song that I just sang? Yeah, probably. Anyway, Trivesen. While well, finding a background picture was easy, it's a Sami family in front of the tent around 1900. A beautiful photo in colour. Creating an icon that was... Problematic. It's not that there is no excellent examples of tribesmen from the era. Problem is, there's too many of them, and all of them feel very local. While we need an icon to represent tribesmen pops all around the world, a strong candidate was the Zulu warrior. He made the icon too. See below. So he made both of these. All right. Um, pretty proud of the outcome, but we rejected it for two reasons. One, it was too specific and fitting one area only, and two, it made no sense to make black skin depiction while all the others were beigeish. Um, just, just gonna, just gonna move on there. Just gonna, just gonna, yep, just moving on. Um, decided to keep the, all the pops, as, you know, just, yeah, let's move on. Uh, that said, the final result also isn't perfect. My role model was a glorious modern Mongolian man, and the result looks fine to represent both Canadian or Siberian tribes, and Mongolians as well, I guess. Uh, but it still doesn't fit the African desert or Amazonian jungle. I even experimented with having multiple silhouettes in one icon, but it stood out too much from the others, so it is like it is now. Um, I mean, scrolling up to this... It does just, just look like a lizard man. Now, I, I even know what it looks like now. And I'm looking at this, and it's a fucking lizard. Like I'm not, I'm not kidding here. It just looked like a lizard. We're gonna, we're gonna blow this up. We're gonna blow this up. Actually, I can just open image a new tab. Here we go. And we're gonna blow it up and look at the lizard man. I can't zoom in anymore. I mean, I'm sorry, it just looks like a bloody lizard man, though. At this at this zoom level, it looks like lizard man. Uh, 
it is what it is. Anyway, go back down past the controversial bit. So, slaves. Oh, yes, very. <laughs> Let's move past the controversial bit and on to slaves. <laughs> because slaves ain't controversial at all. So, the issues of the slave icon were similar to the previous one. Many members of the dev team, and himself included, come from a more or less western part of the world, and thus the view on certain topics may be one-sided. When we think about slaves, most of us see black African-American slaves, while forgetting completely about European or Asian slaves. We also didn't want the only dark-skinned pop icon to be the slaves, as they should be as generic as possible. There is... Right, I'm just going to point out, right? We wanted to, we want everything to be as generic as possible, so they went with the same white-ish skin tone for everyone. That in and of itself is just wee bit, wee bit. I mean, that's kind of the problem. It's kind kind of the problem. Um, I would probably have gone with the earlier decision. Personally, I'd have gone with this. Because while, you know, these... Uh, where are they? Uh, yeah, where are they? Here. So, these look good, right? They look absolutely terrible when blown up to this size, because, I mean, let's be honest, right? Uh, when you put it down to this size, looks great. Looks absolutely fine. Looks not a problem with it at all, right? Artistically, they work really well. But it is the issue that was very much raised in the previous uh, Victoria 3 dev diary in that um, when you have... A vast myriad of different cultures and and stuff in the game all using the same icons they kind of have to not just be based on a single uh skin tone for example um because it stands out it definitely stands out if i'm if i'm playing as a say i'm playing a sokoto um my upper class look like uh, British aristocrats. My middle class look like Irish leprechauns. Um, there, there is that disconnect, and you know, usually it's fine. But at the same time, you're saying that you wanted to keep them all kind of the same because you wanted to, you know, a generic skin tone is is just it's really iffy wording. And I know you, uh, like, more than like 99.9% .9 certain that you didn't mean it in any negative way. But at the same time, it's, it's still a little iffy. The wording there is very iffy. Um, alright, so... Be aware that our pops were already based on Western styles. We went for consistency. That's why the slave icon is represented by a white-skinned person uh, that presumably was a victim of Barbary slavers. Which, I mean, it's fair enough, right? I'm, not, I'm certainly not saying just make the, the you know, your only pop that is um, uh, of a different skin color should be the slave. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I don't know, like, other th if you are absolutely adamant that you want people as the pop type uh, instead of some article of clothing or something like that, um, then I don't know what the what the answer is. I don't know what the 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 best solution is, um, because sure, if you do have, I mean, people will complain regardless of what you do. Um, that is that is an absolute certainty, uh, but I don't know what the the solution would be regarding like what skin colors to have different different pop types. It's a fucking minefield. It's an absolute minefield, and you know maybe having them all the same is 
choosing the path through the minefield that has you blow up the fewest legs. But the thing is, you're still blowing up a few legs. Um, which is a fucking weird analogy, I know. But all the same, it is what it is. Um, personally, I probably would have gone with... For slaves, just some shackles. For the upper class, just a top hat. Um, for the farmer, a pitchfork. Um, that kind of thing. Personally, that's what I've, I, I would have done. Um, just to avoid the, the minefields that you have decided you're going to brave and walk through. Uh, and I'm not sure I would have done that. But I'm not making the mod, so I mean, it's not, it's not up to me. From a technical point of view, this icon is the most uninspired for me. Just a dude in a grey shirt with chains, and one of us even suggested using an Australian convict uniform. Definitely like to rework this icon, but I have no idea how. Uh, as for the background image, I am contradicting all my previous words. I decided to include a photo of a black American former slave, Mr. Henry Brooks, in a photo from 1941, um, which is colorized by Jordan J. Lloyd. Uh, I believe there is an educational value in this. I... So it seems like a bit of a cop out because if you're seeing this image in the game like this, there is zero way of you knowing who this is unless you've already seen this photo before. There isn't there isn't any educational value in just showing a picture with no no sources at all attached to it, no context at all attached to it. All it is is a picture in front of the slave icon. Um, I don't think there's much educational value in that one. Um, the realization that your parents or grandparents' generation might have lived at the same time as Mr. Brooks shows that the American slavery is not that far away from the history as many of you might think, and also this photo has great artistic value. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'm just... Like I said, it's a minefield. You really can't... get around... stepping on some mines... Uh, when you're talking about this this kind of thing. Yeah, well, uh, just, yeah, I'm just going to move on, because I don't really know what else to say about it. I think um, I think maybe the, the, wrong, the wrong direction was went down. Uh, end notes. Be all for now. Uh, next dev diary will tell me more about the pops themselves, their roles in society, and what they'll be able to do. I uh, don't know how to pronounce that, so I won't even bother. Um, maybe I'll leave you with a few random screens from various periods of development as the bonus. So, uh, color swapped on the uh, on on the pop type there. Red suit and a, a blue beard. Very nice. Um, Oh, right. what else we got here? It's in Poland. Prismasil. Nailed that pronunciation. Alright. We've also got Athos near Neos Marmaris. I think probably in Greece, let's be honest. Uh, which is completely sunk. We all live in the Athos submarine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and he's also found Jesus, who is living in Illinois. The Mormons will be very happy. Uh, as is tradition, uh, a couple of mystery flags. I can't even begin to guess at what those are. Um, yeah. Some, let's have a look, see if there's uh, some comments here. Like, Subosnator is the uh, lead dev, so let's have a read of this one. Uh, the, qu the question is right there. Don't want to sound racist, but white slaves, especially in this period of time, looks kind of odd. Victoria 2 itself uses a black man to portray slaves. In the case of flags, yeah, blah, 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 whatever. We're keenly aware of the question about the slave pop icon. We're open to suggestions. As we outlined in the dev diary, it felt odd to have only white characters except for the slave. Like this, this I 100% agree with. This would be way more problematic than what they're currently doing. 100%. Way more problematic. Um, although, for sure, in the time period, the most egregious example of slavery was that of the Western enslavement of people of African descent. Agreed. Ideally, would you use pop icons look look different based on the culture of the province? Uh, Vicky3 has managed to do this with pop icons unique to every pop. We'd love to uh, be able to do that. Subject to change if discussion leads us that way. Um, and, and yeah, whatever about the other one. Um, I, 
I am. I'm just I, like I said. The I think what I would have done is just had the the original pop icons. I think that would have been better. It would have avoided any kind of controversy at all. Because um, I'll be honest, the con the controversy that you get from it is not worth it. It's not worth it. Um, I personally think this looks fine enough. Maybe make it 3D. Uh, the the outer glow here that they've got works perfectly as well. You can do that. That kind of thing, I'd be totally fine with. This kind of tent fits both in Siberia as it does in, um, you know, First Nations Canada, as it does in Sami in Northern Finland. That that kind of fits, right? That doesn't matter. Farmer, they all use pitchforks. They're very useful tools. Slaves and cha uh, slaves and chains makes complete sense no matter what kind of slave you are. Uh, Laborers using hammers. Uh, middle class use briefcases, I, I guess. Uh, upper class with their top hats makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. Um, but when you are assigning skin color to them and you're playing in the entire world, it does get a little iffy, and there's no way around that. There is no way around that. So I personally think they went the wrong direction with it. Um, I don't think they're racist. Uh, I don't think that it was a racist decision, uh, even accidentally. It was just, it's just an iffy one, and it's not the way I'd have went. That, that's basically it. Uh, but anyway, I'd like to know what you guys think. Am I, am I just, uh, am I being too woke, or, or what, what, what's, what's your thoughts on this? Because I am very much conflicted. Very much conflicted. Sherlock Holmes, that's what it is. It's Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. And with that, I'm going to leave you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll be interested to read them. See you later.